So, good evening, everybody, whoever is in the evening, wherever there's night, good night to everybody, and good morning to wherever there's morning, you know, because that's how time zones work. Um, a very warm welcome to everybody who's um, attending the very first capacity building webinar by Scopy and Scory. This happens to be a joint webinar between the two of us. And, um, you know, our growing selections is um, quite a popular subject among a lot of our uh, members, and that is why we thought to maybe start our webinars with this topic. Uh, I am Karan. I am the National Exchange Officer Outgoings for MSCI India, and I am also the Scopy Regional Assistant for Asia Pacific. Uh, I will be joined by a few more people, but we'll find out who that is uh, as the webinar progresses. So I don't want to talk a little uh, more than necessary, so we'll quickly go to the presentation. Um, here it is. Okay. okay, so here it is. Um, how to conduct an outgoing selection process. Uh, a joint webinar between Scopy and Scory. So what is an outgoing selection process? I think pretty much all of us are aware. Um, we sign a lot of contracts you know, with a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of uh, free stuff at the exchanges fair. And uh, we really want to make sure that we give out these contracts to the most deserving of our students. So out an outgoing selection process is important for this very fact. Um, now, why should you have one? Why is having an outgoing process, outgoing selection process necessary, um, especially if you're a new NMO? And if you're an old NMO, why should you improve the one that you already have? Why not just have the same thing? Uh, well, there are a few reasons why. Uh, first, you want to ensure that deserving students go on the exchange. As I said already, you want to make sure that students who already have some experience in, uh, you know, who have clinical experience, who have research experience, they're allowed to go on the exchange. You want to improve your animal representation. You want to make sure that you send candidates that can represent your animal, your country, in the best possible light. Because, well, we always want that, of course. Uh, you want to distribute your contracts fairly and, uh, you know, among a very large group of students. And you want to make sure that you don't pull out all of your head at the same time. If you don't have a, you know, streamlined process, you might just end up doing that. I actually have. Now, what is an ideal outgoing selection process? A process that is done objectively. There is a, a set criteria involved, a clear assessment and uh, a clear assessment of scale and a scoring system is in place that makes sure that all of the applicants that apply for the exchange go to the same standardized process. And of course, you it is very important to have a clear timeline. You want to make sure that you promote your exchanges in the beginning. You send out a call which is open for a considerable amount of time. You make sure that you make it available to as many of your NMO members as possible. And you make sure that you give out the results in time so that you don't miss out on sending the very early AFs. Another reason why uh, it's very important uh, to have an ideal outgoing selection process is to have a transparent and a fair system. You want to make sure that you're answerable to your students, to your executive board, to anybody basically, and you want to make sure that there's no preferential treatment or nepotism that happens in uh, allotting these contracts. Again, you want to make sure that you allow all the students in your NMO, and if you're one of those very kind NMOs, you allow students outside of your NMOs to apply for exchanges as well. And finally, you want to make sure that the process is done professionally and uh, you know is to the point, and it's it has a definite system, and it all progresses as it is supposed to. Now, what qualities should you assess uh, in your outgoings? Now, all of us want to send you know perfect outgoings to each of these exchanges, and I can think of only two perfect people when I think, and that is. Kate Wang and Tommaso Pomerani, our amazing SCORI and SCOPI directors, respectively. So we decided to call the criteria for selecting the perfect outgoing students the Wang-Pomerani criteria. So what is it? Well, 
you want to have students which are willing to go on an exchange, a professional or in a research exchange, and not merely a vacation of some sort, because we're not a travel agency, guys. We want to assess the age or the year of study uh, of the student. The more senior the student is, the more clinical experience they will have and the better they will be able to benefit from the exchange. Any more involvement? Of course, this is one of the most important criteria that you want to look at. You want to make sure that you reward uh, students who are involved in their NMO activities, uh, especially activities related to Scopy and Scori. They can, uh, the more they're involved, the better it is for the entire NMO. Of course, the most impo another important fact is they have good English proficiency. English is the language of our exchange exchanges usually, and we want to make sure that the student benefits the most out of the exchanges. So. It's always good to make you know to make sure that the student is good at communicating in English. Well, this one is uh, a little bit more important for Scopy previous research experience, but some animals, um, some Scopy also reward points for research and Scopy exchanges as well. So it's always that it's something. Uh, again, a little philosophical, but. They need, you need the students to be open to learning and acquiring new skills, and they're open to new experiences in general. Uh, another thing that you really want to assess is the motivation uh, of these students. You want to really know why these students are applying for the exchanges, and it's something that would really give you a lot of insight into the reasons that the student is, you know, an applicant. Uh, extracurricular activities, of course, we just don't want nerds and you know people who stick to the books uh, all the time to go go out and go on an exchange we want everybody to have equal um, opportunities so extracurricular activities are definitely very important in assessing your outgoings another one is um, having a responsible attitude when these students go abroad uh, they are going to be handling patients and that in itself is something that requires responsibility irrespective of the country that the person is in but of course, when you're in another country, there is a lot of other issues involved as well. So you want to make sure that the student is responsible. Um, academic performance, of course, maybe not the most, well, it is important, but I wouldn't say the most important. Again, uh, animal representation, you want to make sure that the students represent you well. The same thing as I said earlier. And finally, you want to have good, brave students who are not afraid of dealing with the database because, well, we have a saying in India that you're scared you're dead, and you don't want dead people to go out of the country. Uh, I will move on to the next part, which will be taken by Tarek. Tarek, over to you. Thank you very much, Karan. Um, are you going to help me with the slides, or should I share my screen? Yeah, I'll help you with the slides. Don't worry. Just go ahead. OK, great. So to introduce myself, I am Tarek Turk from Syria. Uh, I am the Nori uh, of SAMHSA, and um, you're Scori DA. Um, as Karen has said, um, it's really important to minimize or eliminate the risk of bias while selecting outgoings. And to us and to our observation, the best way to do this is to create a point system that is objective, sustainable, um, transparent to all, and can be um, uh, conducted by uh, many uh, neonories even uh, throughout the generations. So. Uh, in in the cases of uh, establishing SCORI or uh, SCOPY in an NMO or activating them, or if you already have um, um, a point system but you want to improve it um, in order, again, to minimize the risk of, uh, of bias or even just to uh, give more equal opportunities to students um, of your NMO, um, you might want to consider um, the things that we're going to um, discuss um, ahead. So it's really important when uh, you're thinking of a selection system is to consider and to assess the needs of your NMO. Because some NMOs um, actually um, focus on the um, ability of the candidate to represent their NMO or their country in the best possible way. Uh, some other NMOs, focus on the academic um, skills and the qualifications of, of, the, or, of the applicant. So first of all, you need to assess what your NMO uh, wants um, by sending these 
um, outgoings on an exchange, either um, research or professional exchange. Um, the second step here is uh, it's always good to check with your uh, your neighbors uh, and other NMOs in your continent and in other uh, parts of the world because um, different NMOs ha have different types of experience and uh, you will always, always get uh, input and get uh, beneficial information while um, contacting and um, um, getting exposed to different types of uh, of selection um, of selection systems. Um, so then uh, you need to define the criteria that you want to um, to <coughs> to use um, in your in your own system, and then you will go um, you will collect all these uh, information and all these data and just pull it uh, put it in um, one um, system that can be used um, uh, in your NMO. Um, next slide, please, Karan. Okay, so um, it's always good to create a system with points uh, with a clear scoring. And in order to create this, there are certain criteria. These are what you're seeing on the screen are the most commonly used criteria um, uh, that we we know of after contacting um, several NORIs and NEOs um, around the world. Actually, the most, the champion of criteria uh, is the motivation letter, but um, to us and uh, to different um, officials, um, we don't think, or I'm, I'm not sure, do, do you guys um, think that it's sufficient and it's um, the golden standard for um, for um, for choosing a candidate or choosing um, an applicant to take the contract um, since it's the most widely used? Um, we'll see in the next slide. So there is also um, personal interviews, uh, language proficiency tests, um, exams. There are some NMOs who who conduct real life exams. Members actually sit for a paper based or computer based exams um, to deserve the uh, the opportunity. And some other um, officials focus on extracurricular activities and what it uh, it tells about the um, the applicant. Um, so the motivation letter. Um, it has absolutely great advantages including uh giving space to the uh to the students or to the members to express their interest to tell their story their passion and the the drive that uh, had them go through the whole selection process um to get um to get the contract but on the other hand um it's still not immune to bias um for several reasons uh, first um Members w with good writing skills can be more their their letter can be more appealing to the uh, to the neo or nori and can be um, more persuasive, uh, but they're not necessarily as good in field and they're not necessarily um, um, they, they do not have the qualifications that might uh, make them uh, deserve the um, the contract or the uh, the spot on the uh, exchange program can be so easy and it's so common for uh, for us students unfortunately uh, to uh, go strike their um, their motivation letter meaning like they can first copy it google it or get someone to write their letter for them so as important as it is motivation letters should be considered uh, as part of the system but um we think that it should not be the only criterion um that you um that you assess um uh, while selecting your outgoings um the next criterion that we're going to discuss is um the personal interviews um tower observation this is way more common in scory that uh, compared to um to scopy maybe maybe due to um to the massive amount of applications for scopy people so uh, it's not feasible for uh, for the officials to conduct uh, personal interviews with every single applicant, which is uh, which is nonsense, of course, when the applications are uh, exceeding hundred applications. Um, it of course has uh, great great advantages, including um, the the most important of which, in my opinion, is uh, the ability to um, communicate with the applicant to assess his personality 
his language, his communication skills, um, might also tell about his um, his uh, professionalism. Um, it does it does way more uh, uh, about an applicant uh, compared to other uh, to other methods. But first, as we said before, it it's not feasible to conduct uh, personal interviews with uh, a huge amount of uh, applicants, uh, and also it's not again it's not immune to bias because. We all have this uh, this member in our, our NMO um, um, whom we, we hate or uh, who started some rumor about us or who fought uh, with our friend. Um, this this can actually uh, cautiously or unconsciously um, affect our decision. And um, since this is a professional um, process, it, it should not uh, interfere with our judgment. Um, so uh, we should just... Um, um, we can, we can, of course, conduct a personal interview, but it should be combined with other criteria that uh, can help uh, make this uh, process more uh, more proficient. And for the issue of having a, a huge amount of applicants, it can personal interviews can be um, um, conducted for the shortlisted um, candidates, not for the whole pile uh, of, uh, of applicants. So going to discuss um, written exams. Actually, actually, written exams are not as as common, but it's actually it, thinking of it objectively, it's the most uh, non-biased, objective way to um, to assess how interested a student is. Because you're get, I know medical students are used to exams, and some of them even love exams. But it's it's like. It's crazy to get someone to sit for an extra exam if they're not interested or not willing to commit um, um, to the process that they're applying to or to the program that they want to be part of. Um, so written exams are really, really um, um, an important criterion that can uh, minimize or even eliminate um, the risk of bias. However, it's still very time consuming. Um, um, I, I don't know. It, it's um, also for some students. Like we all, we all know these um, types of students who are great uh, team team player, who are great at uh, at the lab or uh, in the hospital. But when they sit for the test, uh, they get an F out of the blue. We don't. I know that many of you watching me, they raising their hands, approving that they're an example of this. Uh, they're they're just it's not that they're not good it's just they're bad test takers so um, also even exams uh, can be combined with other criteria um, to create um, a selection system. Um, uh, next slide, okay. Um, so we also have uh, extracurricular activities and university scores in our um, GPA. Um, extracurricular activities are great to show how hardworking and committed um, an applicant or a candidate is, uh, but also um, it's not necessarily um, an indicative of, of how committed this member will be in this particular project, because some members can be I'm very interested and very active when uh, doing humanitarian work as as an extracurricular activity. But when it comes uh, to sitting in uh, in a lab and learning re research related uh, materials, it can be a pain in the um, butt. But um, so this uh, should be taken into consideration while um, while having this criterion on on, on your system. Um, also for university scores. Um, it also shows how hardworking a person is and how um, great knowledge and background he has. But we, we, we have this um, uh, issue and we, are, we worry that uh, nerds might take over. Um, I know that we are all nerds, uh, basically uh, medical students, but there is this type of nerds, nerds that might not be as good in the field as they are in the classroom or, or uh, as they are performing on uh, on the test, so because being because working in in a team or being part of an exchange program takes more skills than just an, the academic and the regular um, uh, memorizing your lectures and um, and taking your test skills. Um, you need communication skills. You need teamwork skills. You need to learn how to learn. Uh, so there are there are there are um, many other aspects that should be taken into consideration other than um, 
um, the university scores or GPA. So these are um, multiple criteria that you can you can take into consideration while taking while building your your selection system. Um, we hardly believe that one criterion can be sufficient. We highly recommend that uh, you combine multiple uh, multiple criteria together and to create the most objective, non-biased, um, and effective um, selection system. So lastly, I know I've talked um, a lot, but I, I just have one last thing to uh, uh, to cover, and which is the scoring system. So we have all these criteria. How we, are we going to assign scores and points um, for these criteria? So some some NMOs assign assign it as percentages. For example, they give 50% for motivation letters. 50%, 30% uh, for the personal interview, 10% for extracurricular activities. And, and candidates with, with the highest scores get the uh, get a contract or even uh, get shortlisted uh, to get an, to get the um, um, the opportunity of, of, of being on, on an exchange. Or you can easily just assign some amount of points like um, 15 points. Uh, I think in Jordan and IFMS Asia, uh, they have the system where there are 15 points for each uh, for uh, for the whole system, and each member, like for the motivation letter, um, and, and and a candidate gets 7.5 uh, for his motivation letter. He can take like for the motivation letter, he can take six out of 7.5, um, and the whole points are, are uh, calculated. And it's also also very important to sit with your EB and have uh, an internal uh, point system <clears throat> for the whole NMO. Like, and this is uh, this is the case for most NMOs where they have this internal points, points system. Um, for, for instance, when a member participates uh, as, um, as an OC member in their NGA, he gets a certain amount of, amount of points and for other activities, other uh, amount of points. And then at the, at the end of the term, he gets his overall points for his internal work and, and his NMO. And this could be a chunk or a part uh, of, the, um, of the overall um, scoring system for the exchanges. You can also um, always consider that taking the highest, um, the, the member with the highest um, score as 100%, and just calculate and create a curve and calculate the um, the other scores depending on this hundred percent. We can, if you have any um, questions about scoring, uh, we can discuss it in detail in details um, at the end of the webinar or um, even after the webinar. Um, this is the end of my part, uh, and I will give it to Amr. Amr, you're up. Hi, everybody. This is Amr. I've missed the eight glory. Uh, Karen, can we go to the next slide? Please? Yeah. Okay, so now we would like to talk to you about some noteworthy examples of different selection criteria in different animals. So, first of all, I'd like to talk about how we apply the noise missile Egypt. We have like two different points we, we apply over our animals. So, we have first exams and interviews. So by doing exams and interviews, we test the student's personality, the representation, uh, how responsible they are. Also, we check their medical examinations, uh, their medical knowledge by medical examinations. Also, Turk Mystic does the same. We do that because we believe that our exchange is mainly medical, so we would like to give it to the student who would get the most out of it. And next, please. Okay, so some animals like IFMSA Jordan and Lincoln Virginia, they they subtract points from the, the student who had already gone on a previous exchange because they like to give the chance to go on an exchange for new students, not only restricted to the same specific students over and over. Next, please. Okay, personal interviews. Uh, actually, many animals do the part of the personal interviews. But for example, IFMSA Thailand has formal uh, formal personal interviews. They like to cover five different points. So first of all, they check your English skills, uh, whether like listening or speaking, and also they check the personality 
the attitude, the information that the student has about the, the, the department or the university and the hospital they applied for. Also, they ask for a motivation letter. Other NMOs have informal interviews like MC Ireland and Life in Save Granada. They have informal interviews through Skype for like 20 minutes where they check the, the student's personality and they talk to them through the 20 minutes. Next. Okay, now we move to like specific formula slash distribution for calculation of points. Some animals like Lamsa, Latvia, and Medicine Sudan, they have like different criteria and they take percentage per criterion and then they calculate it with a specific formula they have for themselves. Okay, now we move to the distribution of spots per LCs. There are two different ways. First of all, FMS file, file and they uh, distribute the unit equally among their LCs, no matter how much the, their capacity is or how many students they have, any other thing. Each LC has equal spots they apply for. And now in IPA Palestine, they have with Emily. So they give like the, the, the spots by they check your uh, the, the capacity the college has, the university has. They check how many students are in this university, how many, how many incoming students they can host, and they have different criteria, more than that. Now that will be my part, and now we move to Philip for his part. Thank you. Hello, guys. Uh, hello, world. This is Philip Neo out from Poland, and I would like to bring you a small summary, maybe, uh, of this uh, webinar and just uh, some points to keep in mind while creating and preparing your own outgoing selection system. So, Karan, please proceed. Dani Avad. Okay, so um, when you when you begin to um, prepare your uh, your own selection system for your uh, NMO, you have to um, think about which approach you'd rather take. So uh, can I have the first point? Okay, thanks. So um, it often comes down to personal approach versus unified approach. So this is what has already been mentioned several times. It's whether we decide to uh, evaluate and, um, and assess uh, every single outgoing, uh, or if we want to um, set a set a specific um, set some specific rules and we want to uh, just equally evaluate everybody so um, the thing is that personalized systems they tend to work better for smaller NMOs and um, so basically because then you have time to do all of that and uh, also evaluate motivation and personal skills so that's possible uh, while taking with taking a personal approach to outgoings. However, uh, as has already been mentioned, they are a bit time consuming and unfortunately they are prone to bias. So on the other hand, a unified approach allows a big number of outgoing students. So if you are have uh, a potential to become to a bigger NMO, so you have many potential LCs that could in, in the future be activated. So this is something that you might want to consider. So uh, this system allows a big number of outgoing students because it's efficient, but it doesn't evaluate students' uh, personal skills and motivation. So actually, um, Poland is one of those countries that uh, utilizes this unified approach system as we have nearly 500 outgoings. So we have all of that that has already been mentioned, so an uh, in internal point system and every member of IF uh, IFMSA Poland has a personal account created on our website and they collect uh, their activity points and upon uh, when they are successfully qualified for their exchange, the points drop to zero. And they, then they have to collect them again in order to uh, apply again. So um, this is something that works for us. And thanks to this system, we are really able to conduct the ho whole qualification process in really just a month. OK, so but please, next uh, point. Thank you. And. Um, 
selection at LC level versus selection at national level. This also um, comes down to the size of your NMO usually, but not necessarily because you can successfully have a fusion of the two. And um, the pros of the LC uh, of the LC level selections would be to that they empower the Leo, and um, they work well for large NMOs with a lot of applicants. Uh, however, the problem is that they might not be standardized because Leos and Loris are different people, and uh, are sometimes prone to preferential treatment. So this is something that uh, has to be considered. National level selections are standardized, but uh, they very often overburden the NEOs and the NORIs, and they increase the workload greatly, the NEOs, the NORIs, and their support teams. So a good idea might be to um, use a fusion of both of these. Uh, if you can, um, if you can uh, give part of the work, part of the um, selection process to the Leos and Loris, and then if, if they can verify the outgoings and um, send the ready and verified applications to you, then uh, it's something that can work for big animals and will be both encouraging and, um, and it will give something to do both to the Leos and Loris and their local teams and to the national teams. Also, what is, uh, what is um, a nice thing to keep in mind and to consider is to um, separate uh, the qualification on the national and the local level, because sometimes it's better for, um, for new students who, up to this point, they, ha they are not, they haven't been part of your NMO, so it's, uh, it's sometimes very usually it's very encouraging to them that they can participate just on the qualification on the local level where where there is less competition than uh, to participate in the national qualification. Um, okay, so please, okay. And the next point to keep in mind is to find a balance between importance of academic achievements and extra uh, curricular activities. Uh, this is again, um, this is maybe a thing that works more between like Scopy and SCORI because obviously for SCORI academic achievements will would be much more important and usually the extracurricular activities are something that uh, that is being considered while applying for Scopy. Uh, let's say uh, you may want to uh, evaluate the candidates uh, work for your NMO. So the number of activities they've participated uh, or whether or not they have um, they have been doing something on a national level, or they've been uh, doing a um, a position uh, or an NGA, and uh, this is all that you have to consider which one is more important. And again, uh, if you want to consider the activity within within the NMO, it makes. Uh, your members more likely to be successful to successfully apply for an exchange but if you focus more on uh, academic achievements this uh, might be more make your um, exchanges more open to public and to students who are not part of uh, your NMO and uh, the IFMSA. Uh, okay and uh, What's also important is to encourage new students. And if you use a point system, you can, for example, give uh, bonus points to new students who have who never who have never been on exchange, or give negative points or cancel out points of people who already participated in an exchange. Uh, this makes uh, things, um, I think, more fair and more encouraging for people who are just starting and they might think that uh, they are not uh, good enough or they haven't been working for a long time enough to in order to uh, participate uh, in an exchange. Okay. And it's important to remember um, about language skills because uh, this is 
English language is the language of the IFMSA, and this is the true lingua franca of the world today. And uh, how, like a student, can have a great motivation and ha and may have great skills, but if they don't speak the required language, uh, it's all really going to be useless. So find the find the um, way that works the best for your NMO. And ha as it has already been said, nationwide standardized English exams, it's a, it's a very good and uh, fairly unbiased option, but it would really only work for a small NMO where it's really possible to organize and have every outgoing student write the same exam. Big NMOs may, for example, consider cooperating with language departments of their students' universities. Usually, uh, the, the universities that our outgoing students uh, attend, they have a, a foreign language department. And very often, when approached by uh, Leo or Olori, the departments, the language departments agree to conduct a English exam for the outgoing students. And um, what is also important is to try to maintain the same selection process in every LC and set a clear timeline in order to make the outgoing selection process fair and organized so that we can all have happy outgoings and we can be happy and rested and not stressed out in the US and Norris. Thank you. Philip, you have one and more. Yeah, we have one more story. I kind of, uh, I, I like, this is another part that I'm doing. So, uh, yeah, we have to be practical, basically, and realistic. And uh, be just, uh, you have to assess uh, realistically what will work and what is possible to organize uh, in your NMO. Be aware of the resources available to you and uh, form something that will be also easy to implement and maintain. Okay, so what if do you need and want help? It's easy, just contact your SCOPE, your SCORI regional assistants. They, they are your big brothers and sisters and they are, they are always out there to help you. You can contact any of your friends who are or were Neos Norris, whether they are from your own NMO or from a different one, it doesn't matter. We all help each other because we are one big blue family. Or you can contact uh, one of us. Also, uh, some of the materials, I think all of them will be um, uh, will be put in the resource folder that uh, you will find the uh, link to in the description below at the end of the webinar. Okay, I think that is about it. We are going to have some time for questions, so I'm just going to quickly open the live chat. Uh, maybe, you know, meanwhile, you can look at the Beautiful faces of everybody who conducted uh, the webinar. So here you can see Philip. Hey, Philip. Hi, 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 guys. It's Philip here. I don't know. Wait, I nope. think they can't see. You can't see me. Oh, yeah, you can see you, Karan. Oh, okay. yeah. I think that's okay. You can see me at least. Oh, sorry. So we're going to keep quickly open the live chat. Uh, we don't have a lot of questions. We have um, somebody called Tommaso Pomerani. I don't know who that is. Um, no he's something, something very funny. I don't know what's funny, Tommaso. Really? OK, I'm kidding. Uh, that's our scope director. And he's laughing at a reference I made on him. Uh, we have the Neo from Armenia. She has a question for us. Um, don't you consider NMO involvement as extracurricular activity? Um, of course, uh, we do. But NMO involvement itself is um, a very specific point that you want to give more weightage to. And whatever is left out from extracurricular activities would then be uh, whatever is left out from NMO involvement, um, beg your pardon, uh, would be considered in extracurricular activities, like you know your involvement in sports, any kind of international or national level events, apart from IFMSA. Because although we keep forgetting there is a life outside of IFMSA, at least for some of us, not for me. Um, okay, Alexandra Swora wants us to make some noise for our hot Polish Neo Philip. So everybody, please make some noise. Come on, we need to do this. So that, yeah, that's all the noise. 
Thank you for the noise. I can I can hear it actually on the over the my headphones, but it's just well, like a background you. noise. That is so weird, man. Don't worry. Um, okay, uh, so sure, we know we have a question. Okay, Neil, Neil from Armenia says thank you for the answer, and Irvin Barbosa, our Scoriari from uh, the Americas gives us a shout out and uh, somebody APXYIP hi this isn't strictly related to the webinar but our LC members who help out in social programs of Scopy financially subsidized using NMO funds or funds from participating students well that actually dependent on different NMOs um, I think Philip do you want to answer this uh, can you please reread the question, maybe? Yeah. Uh, this isn't strictly related to the webinar, but our uh -huh. LC members who help out in social programs of Scopy financially subsidized using NMO funds or funds from the participating students. Basically, do you get any money to, you know, help out? To help out with the, with with the social program. Oh, yeah, the social program, hosting students. Okay, so, mm -hmm. okay, so, um, well, um, the thing is, we don't really uh, use. We try to not to use um, our money in the, like to subsidize uh, all costs because we are not usually, for example, hosting uh, students in other people's houses. However, if that's the case and it's really necessary, then uh, we of we of course can sub subsidize the cost of hosting a student for uh, for the exchange period. It's. It has never been done, but uh, recently, actually, the situation in our NMO has been that the uh, University of Doms has been have been refusing uh, to host our students. So we are c currently preparing a um, a solution for this, and one of the things that we want to do is we want to propose a hosting um, system, like a hosting. Uh, proposal for uh, our Polish students and in exchange for uh, hosting an incoming student they would one get activity points like we already uh, stated that should be it, I think it should be considered an, an activity that should be uh, rewarded with uh, activity points plus they will get a refund for uh, all the expenses connected with hosting an incoming student as for the social program, however, uh, we are not um, proposing any refunds for organizing social program for the incoming students. Uh, but we strongly encourage the, our Polish students who are organizing uh, something for the incoming students to, to just make them pay for it, not like to make money from it, but just to cover the expenses and the costs. I don't know if that answers the question, honestly, uh, if I understood it correctly. If not, you can just uh, correct me and I will elaborate a bit more. Okay, thank you, Philip. Uh, do Amar or Tarek have anything to add here? Do you want me to put you guys on the podcast? Mm -hmm. Tarek, you're oh, online. Yeah. You have something okay. to share? I think we have covered all, all things that, and all aspects that we wanted to go. To go. Okay. Uh, Amr? I think Philip has covered the course as well. Okay, so there we are. That's all of us. I'm going to take um, Okay. Zuzana Slu also wants us to make some noise for Philip. Philip. <laughs> oh my God. Philip, you're ruining the webinar. Uh, oh. Thank you, thank you. I should have been. I should have. I should have been the face, like in the on the cover picture of the webinar event. Yeah, which we, we're we're gonna brag. Open that. All our webinars. We're gonna replace the Scopy logo with just. <laughs> face we're working on it. So thank you. okay, quickly. I'm going to show everybody. So I think that's about it for today. I suppose. We're going to be going on. Okay. Um, okay. No, it's not. Don't say, Boyle, don't say it's one to four now. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Alexandra, I have his number and uh, I will post it on YouTube so that everybody can stalk him. You have to wait for 
a little bit. You see, you see coming, that my Leos, they absolutely adore me, and that's why they decided to just stalk me yeah. even during this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I love you. Those are nice Leos. Um, okay, the person who asked the LC question, I think they're happy. Uh, Nile Oner has a question. Um, hello, I have a question about the system in Turkey. As a Leo, I think the exam system is not the best way. Yes, it is a good system for very, very crowded animals, but is there a better version for it? Does anybody want to take that? Do you want to take this? Actually, I, I, I totally agree with you, but um, always, always keep in mind that every single um, criteria or system has its own uh, pros and cons. Um, it depends on how hard and how um, complicated the exam in your in, in your NMO is. Um, actually, we, we in my NMO we do not conduct exams, but um, it's um, for you as a Leo and as um, as a future potential Neo. Uh, you can you can always uh, see that this is um, the most uh, unbiased uh, way. Uh, it's time consuming. It can be um, disturbing for some for some members and some students. Um, I, I want to, uh, Amir. Do you, do you want to tell us about the exams exams that you conduct um, in Egypt so people can get more sense uh, of what these exams are? Because um, the, the word exams can be uh, can be um, itself disturbing and um, just to answer the question I, I do think that it's not the best um, system when it's um, when it's too much too much exams and when it's taken as uh, as the only criterion um, you can always discuss this with your uh, with the officials of your NMO and suggest some amendments uh, and maybe some suggest some criteria that we have discussed um, during this uh, webinar. Um, Amir, do you want to tell us more about these exams? Yeah, Amir, of course. Yeah, I'll put you on the main screen. Okay, okay so uh, in IFSA Egypt, we have like uh, a unified source for all LCs to bring the exam questions from. So we have six different uh, sections. First of all, we, of course, we test the students' English. We also check their medical knowledge and their information about Egypt because we believe that this outgoing student is a representable, like he represents our country and our animal. So we need to make sure that he knows quite enough about our country. Also, we have, uh, we check their medical knowledge and their IQ. Well, yeah, we check their medical knowledge and their IQ because uh, the medical knowledge, as we've mentioned before, because this is a medical exchange, so the student that goes to this exchange has to know, has to get the best out of it. So if you're like prepared for me for more medical information, yeah, you will get the most out. Uh, and also, I believe that the exams are quite good because this is the best depersonalized way. Like nobody's offended by exams and. It's not really time consuming because our exam is like only one hour, so it's a much. And uh, yeah, that's it. I believe this is a very good way. It's depersonalized. We check the student's English. Also, we have an essay to see how the student uh, can communicate by writing and everything. So yeah, I believe it's a good way. Well, I, I do I do agree that uh, no one is offended by exams unless it's an IQ exam and you do not do well. So uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure about this uh, about this particular detail. Uh, but yeah, you're you're the expert on on uh, on exchange exams. So um, yeah, it's, it it has its pros and cons, and um, every NMO uh, knows um, uh, what suits uh, members best. Yeah, I, I think it depends on the size of the animal. You think as an EO or an OE that you can pull off something that requires so many resources, uh, then you should totally do it because I think this is the epitome of uh, academic quality. If you can, if you actually have numbers and papers showing how good the student is at all of this, then there's nothing better than that. But you should always look into the practicality of it all. Um, if you have a lot of applicants like we sometimes do, um, you maybe not want to take up so much work on yourself. Um, moving to the next uh, set of comments, because nobody wants to question us anything. Uh, 
Larry Leiva, the Scopey Regional Assistant for America, sends his love. Um, Nile, I hope we answered your question uh, more than enough, but if you have something to follow, you can totally, you know, type it out. Uh, Karim uh, says that he loves Amar. Um, Julia Maria from Poland, I guess, says that they love Philip. And, I'll uh, have you, sorry, I'll have you know that I'm already a hero of two memes in, in, in Polish Scopy. So I'll, I'll be sure to send them over to you after this is over. Totally. Looking forward to that. Um, okay, Susanna uh, asks, Philip, have you considered mentioning that system is um, a great motivator in field of extracurricular activities? We kind of don't get what you mean. Can you please um, clarify your question? Or are you just trolling? Oh, uh, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you can you reread it? Because I had it. I had my um, I had my volume on low. Um, have you considered mentioning that system is great motivator in the field of extracurricular activity? I didn't. They forgot to mention what system, so I'm not sure what they. Oh, okay. I guess is, is it is it a question from a Polish person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She means your yeah. system, our system. Yeah, yeah, actually, I think so. I think so. Yes, because um, because the main parts the the, um, the total amount of points that people uh, collect and they apply with, I would say like 95% of those points, not maybe 90%, they come really from the uh, extracurricular activity, which uh, which is really uh, your activity within the NMO. So all the activities like, let's say, teddy bear hospital or um, analogical activities that you have in your NMOs for SCOF, SCORA, uh, SCORP, so uh, for every organized event uh, under this branch, particular branch people are collecting points. So it is not very uncommon to have people, members of IFMAC Poland, who have collected over 1,000 points just by organizing these events. So let's say uh, we have people who have personally organized over 50 teddy bear hospitals in one academic year. And um, as a reward, they can apply with, um, with like, let's say around 1,000 points, even without doing any uh, national level work for our executive board or our team of officials. So this is, uh, this is rewarding, our, but also a little bit controversial because there is a different, uh, uh, different work input between organizing, let's say, 50 teddy bear hospitals and being the animal president. So this is something that we always uh, try to improve uh, in order to have this uh, balance between how, uh, how much of a reward you should have received either for being a local uh, active, lo active local member or being a, an official. This is very hard to balance uh, because this, it's like a totally two different things. Uh, however, our system strongly uh, encourages local activity. So even without being uh, an official uh, in our team of officials, you can apply to very desired countries, uh, desired contracts like, let's say, in Poland, that would be, let's say, Japan or Canada. So uh, this is also uh, viable and uh, realistic for people who are not involved in the uh, in the uh, IFMSA on a national or international level. So I think this is what they want me to say about about a system that is it's rewarding also for people who who choose not to advance uh, and and not to work uh, on a national or or higher level. All right, thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you so much. Wink, our very amazing Scopey regional assistant for. Uh, Scory, regional assistant for your sensor love. Um, we have another question. Uh, Rita W asks us, can motivation letters be included at the same time of the exam so nobody can go strike or copy them? Um, does anybody want to answer? Tarek, why don't you go ahead and answer that? Um, yes, of course. Like it's, um, it's up to you guys how you want to conduct your system. Um, it's, of course, but it, it would be more of um, of an essay, like if I understand you well, uh, it's uh, an essay uh, that's included in the uh, in the exam. 
um, it's it's totally feasible and it's up to you if you think it's um, it would best um, uh, suits the process then then be it there, there is no um, one example or no one standard um, system that applies for everyone and you, it, the great the greatest thing about this whole uh, idea and whole webinar <coughs> is to present different criteria and for each animal <coughs> sorry um, to create their own selection system with um, with all the uh, their needs and uh, how they think it's uh, it's best uh, conducted. Okay, thank you, Tarek. Um, we have a question from the Neo for Palestine. Um, hey guys, um, I have a question about using personal interviews with exams. The interview to assess the student's knowledge about the Federation, Scopy, and general medical background and the fluency in English. So he's basically um, asking if we should go ahead and uh, use interviews along with examinations. Is that what you mean, Neo Palestine? Um, if that's what you're asking, then yes, I think that's a brilliant idea. Um, doing that would basically be um, having a written and an oral exam, um, you know, one after the other. And uh, again, it boils down to the same thing: uh, resources. Uh, if you have Leos, a lot of Leos, and a team mobilized at the at each of these LCs, um, and you can make sure that these tests are standardized, or at least the quality of these tests, you know doesn't fluctuate too much depending on each LC. I think you can definitely uh, try to do something like that. But again, there are going to be some limitations to the entire uh, system. But again, as we said, examinations are a very good way to assess their knowledge. And interviews are a very good way to assess their language as well as their motivation. Because um, if they're going to be going to perform well in these exams, in the written as well as the oral. Um, it's, you know, you can be 99 to not more than 99% sure that these students will do a good job um, in the exchange outside. So I hope we have answered your question, Neo Palestine. Um, let me quickly check while you can look at Amr's amazing Afro. Um, okay, there are no more questions. So, we are going to probably sign off because it, it's almost 59 minutes since we started rolling. And I think everybody, OK. Uh, Neo-Palestine has a follow-up question. Um, sometimes students are good in exams, but bad in personal interview. So um, Amar, do you want to take that? I, can you address your place? Uh, yeah, he says that sometimes students are good in the written exam, but bad in the personal interview. Uh, that's why we have the interview because uh, like m students can be good in an exam and they could just like I don't know like fake it or something but the interview is all the main method you know what's really going on with the student what's really going on inside their head how good are they and tell everything in like a personal way to see how they act like right in front of you not on the paper. So that's why we use, like in, in, in Egypt, we use both. We use the interviews and we use the exams to get like the best out of both. Yeah. Okay, I think we have answered everybody. So we're gonna wait another couple of minutes before um, going off air, uh, just so that any of you late joiners want to ask any questions. Uh, there's 29 people watching, so I don't think it's gonna be the case, but we'll wait for a couple of minutes. Um, until then, you can look at this amazing specimen that we have. Um, here's our newest mascot and logo for Scopy. <laughs> Philip. Say hi, Philip. Oh, I, I can only see my face. Yeah, I'm. I'm... <laughs> well, that was a fail. Can Sorry. I, can I unsee it? Okay, I think that's working now. Yay. Uh, we're going to go off air in one minute. And I'm waiting for your questions. Yes. Oh, that was, oh my god, I'm just I'm just going to get so mimified for this. Um, thank you for the idea. That's <laughs> going on all social media that exist by tomorrow. 
Um, do any of you have any questions or doubts or observations that you made during the webinar? You can totally share. Any of you, all, four, all three of you actually. Anas, Tariq, Philip. Okay. I can do a live countdown, but that's kind of boring. <laughs> so I think we are going to be done for today. So just a quick um, goodbye from everybody. Um, this is Tariq. Um, Tariq, our amazing Thank story you. development assistant. Thank you, Tariq. Um, Philip, our Neo from Poland. Amr. Who am I? Uh, from Egypt. Where? I didn't forget to get your face to go online. <laughs> and finally, that's annoying me. Okay, I'm presenting to everyone. Everybody says goodbye. Goodbye, guys. Thank you for Bye, joining guys. us. Thank you for this webinar. It was really Happy. great to do this webinar, and hopefully, we answered some questions. We will help. And uh, we will see you very soon. Maybe not us, but somebody else. We'll see you very soon on another webinar, maybe next month. So keep your eyes open. Uh, goodbye and good night. Have a nice day, everyone. Happy outgoing selection, everybody. Yes. Yeah. Select amazing outgoings. Send them to India. Send them to Poland, Egypt. Send them to all the countries that you want to. Syria, yeah, maybe. And, yeah, no, Syria no. as well. Yes. Maybe in 10 years. OK. Bye. No, Goodbye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.